Hey everyone, welcome back to my workbench. Um, so, I give myself a break from the Tiger Learning Computer. I'm working in the Tiger Gamecom instead. So, this is a Tiger Gamecom. Um, it's a, I have a working one somewhere, but um, kind of working. This is a Tiger Gamecom. I've done other videos on it. And this particular one is not working at all. So uh, what I'm doing is retro. I've done it once before, and I wasn't entirely happy with the results. I used a Raspberry Pi to um, go and um, uh, make a little system. So this time around, I'm going a little different. This is a it's a little three and a half inch. Uh, LCD screen, uh, HDMI input, and uh, this is a Pi 3, the, I forget what they call the smaller form factor one, but it only has one USB port on there uh, instead of the 4 and the, um, the network jack, so it makes it much smaller. But for my application, it's fine because I don't need, to, I don't need all the extra bells and whistles. So, the challenge is the Gamecom uh, used a regular more or less 4x3 aspect ratio. And I could, what I did before is I got one of those screens from um, a backup camera. But the problem is that's a composite input and I wanted HDMI. And last time I had to have the entire Pi basically bolted to the back of this thing it was hanging off the back and it was a little bit hokey so um this time around i'm gonna use this guy so I, i'm running into two problems you can see the the screen is quite a, the height is very close but the width is a, quite a bit off so i need to carve out some plastic to uh i'll take it to my uh, cnc and i'll cut a nice wider slot here. I'll probably just do it by hand without putting the program in and then what I want to do also is put in, if I have the plastic thickness, which I might, um, put in a little bit of a pocket for the display itself um, so it has a nice little pocket to sit in so there's no messing around with the uh, location. Uh, the thing I'm a little concerned about, not concerned, but the challenge is, well, one, I'm probably going to have to rotate my screen so it goes this way, which is fine. Uh, but this darn thing is so tight internally, it's not even funny. Um, is I need to be able to figure out, okay, how am I going to get, well, I don't need to get power to the screen because it's coming up through the, the header pins. However, I do need to get power to the Pi itself. So I might end up doing is just, yeah, I'll do that. I'll just tack on some wires on the power supply. And uh, that way I don't have to worry about running power to it uh, with a connector. And then uh, what's actually kind of cool about this screen is it automatically decodes the audio signal and puts it to an analog jack and that analog jack can go um, well, I, if I was really feeling nerdy, I could feed it out to here, and I probably will feed it out to here, and I'll feed it out to the, the built-in speaker as well. So, these usually have a little switch inside of them, so when you plug it in, it actually cuts out the, the, uh, the speaker board, which sits up here. Uh, let me see. Let me grab the little bits here. lot of parts of this thing. So, I'll show you a little bit of what I'm have to work with here. This is a little USB to joystick board. This is the uh, directional pad. This is your uh, ABXY start select whatever. And then uh, that's little covers. There's a stylus that came with it. A bunch of little cables, USB, 
Um, again, on the USB side, I might just tack on directly because it's only four pins. Yeah. Well, no, I could leave the connector on there. Whatever. I'll see if I have the room or not. I might not. So, uh, unfortunately, what we'll probably have to end up doing is we're going to have to have... Oh, this is precariously placed. So, of course, there's a little plastic board. There's a lot of bits in this stupid thing. Okay. A plastic board. A little plastic board sits here. And that's what this is. The, uh, the controller board sits here, so I'll probably end up having, yeah, again, I'll have to tack wires directly onto it. Going from this and this board, which sits this way. It's got to sit some way. It's your backup battery. It's going to be this way or this way. Okay, which way it goes. It's like this. There's a little CMOS battery that was in this thing. This is a second. I got 50 50 chance. What am I doing wrong here? It, no, it was wrong. It was turned this way. Okay. So this board, oh, sorry, this board sits in here like this. This board, this little hunk of plastic sits here like this. This sits up here. We've got about literally 40 screws that hold this thing together. Uh, and this sits up. I can see the alignment pins there. Uh, yeah. Like that. That sits up there like that. So the pie. Yeah, it's going to have to be rotated so it actually fits in here. Like this. And then, um. See if I have the original audio board. I might. You know what? Maybe I'll reuse the audio board with a little, there's a little uh, audio board. Let me pause this a second, see if I can find it. Well, that's weird. For life of me, I can't find the uh, spare parts I had of the game count. Maybe I threw them out in the rage. Well, that could be over there. Soldering irons, headphones, tape, jump starters. Yeah. Maybe I got angry, threw it out. Oh, whatever. Oh, regardless. So this is, in case you're wondering, this is what the real game cam looks like. I don't have any batteries in it right now. I don't feel like turning it on anyway. Um, it's like unplayable. Um, so, like I said, the problem is trying to fit all these things in here is quite the challenge. Oh, it just will drive you slightly mad. Get down there a little bit. Is it down far enough or is it too far? They really engineered this very, very tightly. So you don't have a lot of room to work with stuff. I could probably slice off parts of this board, it wouldn't matter. That's just a deep ounce there. Where do you go? Do you go all the way over there? Yeah, this thing is just a pain in the neck. Anyway, let's see if I go this way. shave off a little plastic here. If I get up there, that means, yeah, I can get the height I need. 
audio, I'll just tack on the back, talking to myself here, audio, I'll tack on the back, yeah, audio, I'll tack on the back, then I'll do the power tacked on the back, so I'm worried about that, uh, still run into the, see, I can actually get the fit this way, and then I'll have probably a little audio amplifier sitting in here, which I do have one of those, oh, little, uh, little audio amp I'll have here hidden away underneath the uh, there's a little serial cover that went here so I'll hide that cover that up but I'll still be able to I'll probably keep the volume pretty fixed but then uh, use the software to adjust the volume uh, this little guy here is a little um, charge circuit for uh, lithium-ion batteries, so I'll probably end up using... Oh, they fit! I think I have two good ones still. They love the swell. These are little uh, battery packs to use for drones, but with any luck, at least I'll get one in there, maybe two. Yeah, let's see if I can get... It's gonna be tight getting two in there. Let's get one in there. These are little uh, drone battery packs. What uh, capacity do you have? 3.7, 1200. It gives you 83. It can give you an hour, a little over an hour. That'll be fine. Uh, unless I can get two in and double them up. Uh, do I have one more? This is a badly organized video. I apologize. I have one more kicking around. Oh, there's a swollen one over there. Let me pause. I'll show you what a swollen one looks like. So, um, to show you what happens, this is this is your pack originally. This is the pack on drugs. Um, not on drugs, but very puffy. Do not pierce to let the magic out. It'll catch on fire. And you can only put it out with special type of fire extinguisher. Do not puncture lithium batteries. Lithium is very reactive with air. So don't mess with them. So I do have two packs, which is good. That's a question of, can I pack two of them in here? Uh, do I have the space? Well, I only have the space close. It's real close. Now the other alternative is to use a different type of cell. But this thing is so tight. I'm still talking to myself. What's the ratings on these suckers? It's like worn off completely. Huh. I wonder if it's on the blown up cell. Well, ironically it is. 3.7 volts, 1800 milliamps hours. 3.7, that's 1.8. Okay. That's well, still enough watts. That gives you, uh, uh, I can't be at right now. 3.7 times 1.8 gives you 6.66 watt hours. Pi draws about 3 watts when it's running, so that's going to be alright. I wonder what it really does draw. Well, let's do an experiment right now. Here's a fun one. So I have. I'm curious what it actually does draw. Grab a controller here. Let's see how much we can get out of one. So I should get six watt, more or less six watt hours. So I'll plug in this, plug it in the controller, and I've got a little USB. You can't see it from over there, but there's a little USB uh, diagnostic thing that lets you know how much a uh, system's drawing. So let's take a look. It's 
see what she's for. Oh, here yeah, you can watch a boot. There you go. Here's your little tiny retro pie. That's to give me a little bit of a low voltage warning. That's all right. While this is booting, it's only drawing uh, it's 5.2 volts at She's almost booted. Getting there. At least I'm not getting into the flashing red light, which is good. Alright, so she's loaded up. See, it's a cute little screen. Well, that comes out horribly on the video. Oh well. Um, so let's try to see. Let's run an actual game. Yeah, I'm getting low voltage warnings. That's all right. If you ever wonder why I usually load up. Atari game, Lynx games, is because I actually own these games, so it's not really a try not to. Yes, I know undervolt is detected. Not that it really matters, I'm just curious. Uh, why can't I find a plug? Oh. Hmm. Whatever, it does have sound. You just can't, there's no speakers hooked up to right now. Let's see. Let's actually play a game. So the pie is drawn 5.1. 1 volt, 5.12, almost 5.2 volts at 0.6 amps. That's not too bad. Pause that a second. 5.19 times 0.6. Yeah, that's right, about three watts. So, yeah, it'll run in about two hours in a single pack. That's not too bad. Mm. Yeah, I'll think about that. Probably will work. Just one pack will do it. Otherwise, I'll see if I can jam two of them in there. But I'll have to modify a bit more uh, plastic to get there. So, yeah, probably if, if I cut this out, cut this out. I have enough room to put two packs in, which give me over six watt hours. Sorry, so, yeah, It'll give me a, give me twelve watt hours, so four hours of play. That's not too bad. Uh, so the other problem I'm going to run into, yeah, I'm def definitely going to have to tack stuff directly on the th overall thickness. I'll show you the overall thickness of a game com. The overall thickness is it's very thin. I mean, thumbish. Alright, so the problem you run into is pretty obvious. You can see, is this has to mount right here, it sticks out the back. Let me see if I get an angle. It's going to stick out the back a bit. So, what I'm also going to have to do is cut out the section here and then use um, a 
nice little this is for the Raspberry Pi as well it's for the bigger case but it doesn't matter um, well but the you can see the the plastic is very similar so I'll end up um, cutting this down and just having like a little bulge on the back which is going to be sitting right about there but not it won't be sitting out anywhere near that far I'll have to end up zinging off like a lot of this so I'll end up cutting the surface down uh, just so I can bump out this little guy is this actually sits like that let me turn this off down. Lots of low voltage warnings, but that's not unexpected. Quit shut down. Yes. So I'll end up doing, even though this is not meant for this case, it's close enough. Pull this apart. I'll end up putting the um, put the pie in like this and then I'll have a little uh, kind of this surface here will bump out from the back and that'll uh, just put a little little bump on the back not quite that high probably a little bit shorter than that so it won't bump out too far so from the front it'll be fine your hands won't even touch it because it'll be pretty centered on there so well, oh well, c'est la vie. Um, but yeah, it's going to unfortunately fit it all in there. I'm going to have to cut out a section about there for the pie itself to, to fit. Because it's just, it's too darn thick. Well, actually, the tiger is too darn thin. So, uh, so the first thing I'm going to be doing is cutting out. Use a ball and then cut a ball cutter, maybe? Mmm... What should I cut with? Burr, burr, tiny. I thought I had a ball cutter. No. That big one is. That's not a ball end. That's a burr end. Those are too big. Hmm, something like this. I got one of them here too. So this has like a like a tapered end on it. I'll come along and cut along this edge and along this edge. And then I'll take the um, just your regular end mill and then carve a pocket out here and then i'll have to go through figure out exactly where i need to cut a pocket here so a lot of cutting plastic cutting not a lot of electronics a whole lot of plastic cutting oh and the last thing i'm probably gonna do is try to figure out a location for the power button so um i, I can either drill this out and just have a hard button there the only issue I run into is, uh, where is that stupid little board? There's the stupid little board. Stupid little board's here. Uh, actually might work. Yeah, so I'll end up cutting, uh, yeah, what we'll do is I'll, um, bore this a little bit bigger and just put the on off switch in here and that'll be nice to have the on off switch where the on off switch is at uh the only thing i do i hate to say this, the only thing i do like about the gamecom is the control layout it's actually not horrible uh the, the pad d-pad's totally nasty and the buttons are just your regular old membrane ones but that being said the layout isn't bad uh, for adult sized hands where's a complete one nah, I keep losing it I'm losing my mind there it is the complete one 
actually it's not I mean I hate to say it I mean they had a good concept they even angled the d-pad so it's slightly see how your thumb comes up to it like this your thumb isn't like this it's like this so they actually lined it up pretty nicely and I mean for its time not bad I mean they're pretty responsive buttons and it's got four face plus the three interface buttons which is fine for uh, the pie you only need you only need that many buttons to do it play most games um, this one I'm probably going to focus on um, home consoles not arcade games so that'll be fine and yeah so it'll be I'll put the on off button where the on off button's at right now I might end up if I cut it nice I'll uh, paint this silver again and uh, get a better looking neat piece of tech now oh, neat yet crappy at the same time uh, touch screen had the built-in modem, ran off of four double A's, terrible screen. But I have other videos on it. I'm sure to see other, I think Ashens has, Stuart Ashens has a, a piece on it. And, and there's other people done it too, like a classic game room. It's nothing hasn't been shown before, so I do have a working one. And I do have a couple of broken ones. And I still have the parts from the original one I did, but it's, I was never entirely happy with it. But that's enough of me yakking for now. I'm going to see if I can somehow mount this flat to uh, get it on my CNC. Start cutting some plastic. Hopefully tomorrow night you can see a little plastic cut. And then more plastic cut. And then put the sucker back together again. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, welcome back to my workbench. Uh, for tonight, I'll just give you some updates where I'm at right now. So, on the Tiger Learning, sorry, not Tiger Learning, Tiger Gamecom, I do have the screen mounted up on the, I have this cut out larger, and I have the screen mounted. If I cared, I'd put an extra bezel on here, but uh, I'm just going to leave it kind of homemade looking dirty right now. So, uh, so that works. Uh, so what I wanted to do is, I last night I added, um, I decided to go with uh, continuing on with the regular AA batteries to power it up. Uh, it, I did the math and it's about nine, a little over nine-ish watt hours which will run the run at about a little over three hours which is fine i'm not going to be playing it that much because i if i went off a single one of these cells you get about 9.62 watt hours and it actually worked out to be almost identical to regular old double a's so that way i don't have to cut any extra plastic and all i have to do all i did was add this uh buck converter here which boosts sorry this is a boost converter this boosts it from uh what's it about 4.8 eh, 4.8 ish volts up to the 5.2 volts it needs to be and i added this little uh push button switch toggle uh, that i'm going to mount into what used to be the um DC input line if you want to run it off of a wall wart so it's going to go I got to drill the hole out a little bit later but it's going to go right in there and it matches really nice so just click click and you'll be able to turn the system on uh, I did want to I'm doing right now it's really late right now it's, it was a late night um, add some connections for I need white black red i'll keep the brown as an extra um i wanted to hook up the audio output from the directly from the no, not the pi i want to hook up the audio output from the hdmi display to the speaker to see if it has enough to um run the speaker directly or if I need to add an extra 
Yeah, it should be able to. That's why I'm giving it a shot because it can. If it can, this is that little speaker there is no bigger than a headphone speaker, uh, so it should have enough power to drive a headphone. Uh, sorry, it should be able to drive that little little speaker there. Oh, so that, and I want to figure out what the I want to tack on wires to do the power instead of uh, going through the whole trouble of uh, I'm talking to myself uh, there's I'm not gonna be able to fit uh, a micro connection there so if you ever look at a audio plug when you plug it in it's stereo so the tip is left channel, ring is right channel, and then um, ground is the sleeve. So it's TRS. So if you ever see TRS, it means tip, ring, sleeve. So the tip, and then you have your ring, and then sleeve. So I'm just going to hook up the left channel to the um, speaker. Then I'll run the full stereo out to the headphone jack, which is uh, right there. But for now, I'm just going to run the tip. So yeah, the tip and the sleeve to the speaker and see what kind of. Uh, let's see. The tip is the furthest away, which is that. Let's see how well this takes the solder before I have to put flux on it. Let's take a look. Ooh, it takes solder very well. Excellent. Somebody must have intended this to be do this. So there's your tip. Well, it's a nice solid connection. Here's your ring. Oops, sorry, you can't see it. Tip. There's your ring. Right there. And there's your sleeve, which is your ground. Sometimes, like the pie itself, uses a TRRS, which has got tip ring ring sleeve because it has um, the tip and ring are still used for audio then you have your sleeve first sleeve which is uh, sorry your second ring is used for I believe it's used for the video analog video then the sleeve is ground and since I'm here what I wanted to do is figure out which on the pie itself I can never remember on this this guy here. I can never remember. It's, uh, this is your connector coming in, uh, micro coming in, and one of those is the ground. One of them is the power line. Let's see. It's gonna be actually pretty easy to tell because you just go from the ground on the board, which is gonna be the same as this. Because the shield on it is going to be the same as the crown. So you got two points. One of them is this. That was right. So, oops, let me move it up so you can see what I'm talking about here. This guy here is ground, and that's your five volts going to come in on. Here's your ground. No continuity. So as your ground comes in, then your five volts comes in there. Oh, it's actually like 5.15 is what the the uh, pi actually likes. Okay. Oh, black and, black and red. Trim that way down.
and there's your, there's your tip ring sleeve and I'm putting a black wire tin of wire tin of wire easy from having to have a connector sticking out of it and this is going to go everything's actually going to be pretty tight in here once it's all done so that's going to face top this comes up here I don't want too much wire because this thing is not that big in here all right let's put this tack this on here I actually adjusted this little boost converter for to be 5.15 volts. So let's go go ahead and solder this on, solder this on. Like so. Like I said, I already put the switch in there so it's not gonna turn on arbitrarily. I'll adjust the voltage one more time with the full load on there. And sometimes in your your loaded voltage and your unloaded voltage are slightly different. this guy. So this uh, 
This Gamecom has a pretty awful speaker, but it's not the worst I've ever heard. Which one's grounds? Cause mine. Okay. Let's take a look. Should be seen. Thirty two ohm speaker, which is fine. It's normal. Actually it's good because it's a low resistance, it'll uh that work just fine. Now next to impossible to get in HDMI. Is that in all the way? I'll find out in a second. And audio is hooked up. It's not even giving me low voltage warnings, which is good. We just set it right. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to put in a solder directly onto the back here because that is way too tall. If the speaker's too quiet, I'll just add a, a, a audio amp in line with it. I got this guy and I got a smaller one too. Screen is dirty. Oh my goodness. Okay, there we go. Sounds city. devices HDMI. Okay, good. Get out there. Well, that's way too quiet. Alright, so I'm going to have to put it in. Definitely put it on. Produce the sound. Alright, that's fine. I go. Do I do this one? Do I have the room for this one? Oh, you can see how cool it looks though. You got the, you know, you can't hear it.
wanted. Call it shutdown system, yes. So that was my experiment for the night. So I got the power working, and now what I just need to do is figure out uh, a little audio amp for it. I think I have a smaller one than this, too. Um, then, of course, when this all goes together, I need to cut this guy goes like this. Good, I'm nowhere close to that sucker there. It's going to go together like that. Now I just need to figure out where I need to cut plastic so I can actually uh, close the case up. That's a good knife for a short one. But yeah, there's your little, there's your little power switch. There's your little boost converter. Probably boots up nice and fast now because it doesn't have um, doesn't have a problem with the amount of power it's getting. All right. Don't want that shorting across there because that's bad. All right, so next up I am going to go ahead and and uh, add that audio amp. But that's enough for tonight. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, welcome back to my workbench. So, a couple days ago I fell down some stairs. That was very unpleasant. But I'm up and moving around and working on this little Tiger Gamecom. After I'm done with this, I'm going to get back to working on the um, little uh, Tiger Learning Computer, see if I can figure out with the mouse and all that. So what I'm doing tonight is getting this. I need to cut out a section of the housing here to allow the pie itself to go through. So I'm going to start in this corner. So I'm just going to use a little hand drill. And not drill through my tabletop. Where's some scrap wood? Oh, plastic. Sick. Okay, there we go. That's out of focus. So I'm just drilling a little starter hole here. Let's see how close I am. Draw up a quick DXF. Let's see where I do I have the brake head on here? I do. Drawing preferences, units, millimeters. Okay, maybe I'll share my screen here so you can see what I'm actually doing. Might be useful to the younger people. Alright, OBS. Okay, OBS. I'm gonna. Uh, video capture. No, window capture. Big. I'll put my 
myself on top here. Do, 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 do. Order, order. Where's the order? I'm going to move to top. Okay, there we go. Alright, so now this is your origin point. This is a program called LibreCAD. It's an open source uh, software. Let's see how big it is. How big are you? Oh, dear, oh dear. Where is the workshop's a mess right now? I had it. Where did you go? Pause this just a second. So I have my caliper, and this thing is sixty five millimeters wide by fifty six high. Let's give us some extra leeway. Let's go let's see what 60 looks like. 60. Yeah, let's go 58 by 65 plus the card. 65. Let's go by 71. 65 by 71. So I might make a rectangle. I wish I had multiple monitors on this machine. I don't. Alright, I want rectangle zero comma zero. And I'm going over. 71.5 comma 58 high. Oh, not 85, 58 high. Okay, so that's our rectangle. Alright, so we're going to save this as. Saves as a DXF. So going back to here, let's open up uh, not flat cam. I need not the Gerbil control. I need DXF G code. All right. So this. Will Share this in a second. I'm going to add window capture. This is another huge program, so you can see. All right, this converts your DXF. Converts DXF code to G code, which is what the uh, cam controlling software uses. So I'm going to open the file I just created. This is GameCom cutout. Alright, so this is it's your drill origin there. And then there's your optimal path. Alright, 
options. Actually, it's pretty simple. Alright, so here we go. That's what I wanted. Z retraction, 15 is fine, safety margin. Top is zero. Final middle depth. How deep do we have to cut? Final middle depth is we're going to, have to cut through with this plastic, so it's 2.14 millimeters. Minus 2.15. XY feed rate 150 millimeter event. Yeah, it's a little fast. Let's go 75. Z will slow it down to 50. See what the Z and V depth is. Let's see. Oh, no, that's not useful. Okay, options. Uh, milling machine millimeters, machine config. Slice depth 0.14 millimeters. It's going to take all day. Let's go. Oh. Two millimeters, let's go 2.25 millimeters. Close. Right. Yes, all right, so that gets us out of here. And finally, Control. Let's get rid of. Okay, so you got your gerbil control now. And let's go into file, open. Back on my Google Drive. So there is your make sure she starts at XYZ. First drop is 0 0.25, then 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 1, 1.25, 1.5. Okay, so it's I was just reviewing to make sure these motions make sense. So Minimize this a little bit. And I need to set up on the milling machine. Let me pause this a second.
Hey everyone, um, uh, this is probably going to be part of an edited video, but uh, this is after cutting on the CNC. I think I want to get in and hit this with a file real quick. I think I'll do a time, well you've probably already seen the time lapse of the CNC. nice evenly cut hole. It's going to go right over like this. And then I'm going to modify one of the Raspberry Pi housings to cover it kind of like that. So on the CNC later I'll mill off. I don't need actually that much height out of it so I might cut down all the way to the surface. So I'll just come through and just cut like the surface down, the surface down, cut down these uh, standoffs here the hold downs or screws and then zing off this whole area so I'll, I'll probably do is I'll, I'll get the height off a z height off of here and I'll just slowly come through and just uh, cut it evenly all the way around so at the same height all the way around and it'll give me a nice I, I mean I don't need, don't need much because when you actually close this up the PC board is basically flush with the surface, so it just needs to just barely be bumped out from there. So, uh, what I did want to do was finish hooking up some of the hook up this amplifier here. This is uh, a little stereo amplifier, and uh, hook this up right out, left out. So, I'll go to Right now, it's red. The challenge I'm running into is making sure when I put this together, I can actually uh, close this up. It's some white. There's some red. They use red, white, and blue. Oh, why not? Do their color scheme. Red. Blue. It's this little guy's coming along. The white. He's a bit long overkill, but whatever. Use blue, which is fine. Nothing wrong with using blue. Okay. Maybe I'll splice them in. Yeah, I'll do that. I got a whole box of uh, shrink tubing here. up the heat and after this I have to work on I uh, do the left channel first uh, wiring up the the USB controller for the contro USB joystick which should be going well not ironically but conveniently underneath where the original where the uh, joystick sits uh, controller button sat so plus left plus out
Five volts off the boost converter as well. Good reminder for myself. Before I go further, I'll go ahead and uh, oh, the pluses are towards the center. Okay, that's interesting. and everything I need to figure out now. So this is going to go here. This is going to go here. And this is just your, your left is going to go here. And then continue on over there. Let me get the power hooked up while I'm here. I'll do orange and brown, just so different colors. It's my system, I can make it any colors I want. Let's see, orange will be positive, brown will be negative. Tin those first. I'm a huge fan of autofocus, so I don't mind uh, doing a little manual there. Tilt the two eye up. There we go. Alright, so these are pretty short. So this is going to sit here. Come here. And I need, still need to do the power in a second. I'll do these, tin them up. Tin those all at the same time. Again, this GameCom, the biggest problem I'm running into is the uh, just how little room we have to work on in here. Not very generous space. Why am I getting out of focus all the time? Hmm. F must be really high number. There's not much depth of field. I'm a photography guy, so I notice this stuff. Got my uh, SLR on the f DSLR over on the floor there. I still like lenses. I mean, uh, I like mirrored camera still haven't made the leap the mirrorless as it takes just fine pictures and I am 
familiar with the camera. And I really like the battery life of uh, the DSLR. So if you're not firing flash, my goodness, you can go ages. I keep one spare battery on you. Me to let you know how little I worry about running out of power. This is not having to drive uh, the sensor all the time. So you look through a DSLR, you are looking through the lens, hardware-wise. You can actually focus on everything without even, you, if you have a manual focus lens, you can focus uh, without even uh, turning the camera on. You can be completely off and you can still set your shot up. Which I think is kind of cool. This, this, I need to get a 5 volts to this amplifier here. Positives on the right, negatives on the left. This is actually what I didn't want to do, is have to put the amplifier in here, but see la vie. And I need to clean up my workbench. It's getting kind of messy. I'm just delaying the inevitable working on that learning computer. I don't know what to do with it at this point. It's just so touchy. Any change on that input impedance for the... Uh... Oh, I should have gone the other way. That nah, doesn't matter. Alright, let's make sure this sits in here okay. This comes in here. This sits there. Actually, I'll come back a little bit. I want to sit about here and the reason why is I'm like talking to myself the reason why is there's a little plastic cap that goes on here and I want to cover up the uh, the knob and so that works so this will go to the boost converter which is sitting right freaking next to it okay this is power coming in this is booster coming out boost Loose circuit is going to sit very close. So these wires are short. Very short, actually. Don't need to be long. Short wires. Brown is negative. started called tinning it. And the funny thing is it really is tin. It's not like a euphemism. It's actually tin as you're using. Well, and lead in this case. Though the big scheme of things, lead is slowly phasing out except for crucial applications. The problem is lead, when they went the lead free solder, you get what's in those tin whiskers, which aren't good, or dendritic growth, which can be very dangerous. Very dangerous. Perfect? No? Work? Yes. Uh, 
on, do I power this up with batteries or just hook up one of my power supplies? I'm just gonna hook up the 5 volt line. I have a 5 volt supply up here. Let's see how everything looks. Oh, I do need a controller plugged in. This I will hook up. Oh, this thing's a mess. I will hook up. Here's your negative five. Here's your five. Simulated battery load. There we go. Is this guy? Oh, well, it's the overhead lights. Never mind. Let's see if I can get some decent volume out of this thing. In case your kids are wondering, I was playing this game in 1989. You can see how far ahead uh, the guys who designed uh, the Amiga were. Okay, I guess that works. Overdrive a little bit. It's a terrible speaker. Ugh. Okay, that's good. Alright, that's a good sign. That works. Yeah, that's what I was playing back in 89. I was playing games like Electro Cop, Blue Lightning, California Games, 
fun stuff like that. Alright, so that gets most of the way there. So this comes out. This is a rat's nest, that I don't like. That's gonna connect the battery. This needs to run from here. From here. Where's the blue wire? This will be nice and convenient because then I can uh, plug in the headphones if I want. to wire strippers. A lot of people use the auto strippers. I always use the manual strippers. This is pretty thin. This looks like 30. Indeed it is 30. Higher the number the smaller gauge. AWG, American Wire Gauge. Alright, back is feeling better, but my entire lower back, lower back's covered in curves right now. Uh, not curves, I am full of curves and I'm chunky. It's covered in bruises right now. After this is going to be the USB and the controls translation stuff. All right. What I like to do is I like make a little U and another little U. learning computer next what I think I'll be doing is um, work on the uh, figuring out if I can make a mouse work for it because at least that would help with some of the uh, navigation navigation kind of sucks on there want to slide your heat shrink over too soon because what happens is this joint is still hot and it'll shrink before you get all the way over the uh, the joint itself which I've done before I'll admit it jump the gun a little bit Too small of a heat shrink tube. Darn it. Oh well. If you won't tell, I won't tell. Not like it's high voltage running through this thing anyway. This one is a crap. 
be looking at solder joint, that's why. This one slides down too easy. Yeah, whatever. If I cared, I'd do more. This is for a personal project, so it doesn't really matter. Alright. So those are all sitting there. Alright, so now I need to figure out. USB. Here we are. This is your USB cable. This ends okay. Right. So what we're going to do here is this is going to sit here. this stupid this thing Sorry. this is gonna have to sit here we're gonna have to cut a little bit of plastic here I'm thinking oh, shoot. that's not what I want to do because I don't want to desolder this yet oh wait the whole module comes out does it yeah it comes out I've taken it out before Next up, we're going to cut this section out here. If you look here, the problem is right there. That little tab is kind of in the way. I kind of want to, I would say, undercut it. At least zing it all the way out. Let's see. That will probably just enough just the center post is the only one that needs to be taken care of let's see if we can do the old-fashioned way Fashion meaning nippers and diagonal cutters. Which I think we'll be able to do. Give it a little notch down there. Let's see how that sits. Pretty good, actually. I need to come in under there a little bit. Or do I go in this way instead? Ah, yeah, that works out better. Like that. So let's think orientation-wise. This thing is needs, unfortunately, needs to go over to here. Or can I run across the top? needs to get to the top anyway. Yeah, I'll just uh, sneak it sneak it right here. Yeah, this will do. So I'll go a little 
strong on there. I need to cut off that string and leaf. This is going to be a long video. It's going to be four edits, probably. I need to do a time lapse on the I really molded that on there, didn't I? Oh, this company wasn't messing around when they put their strain relief on here. And I nicked the wires. Alright, I'll just cut it right there. If I need to extend it out, I will. This is going to sit here, oh no, it's going to sit right up like this, it's going to sit like that, come on, you can get in there. Nipping tools, very handy. Okay, so uh, see that fits in there, real nice. All right, that sits in there nice and flat, and this is going to end up. Being a little short. Alright, that's fine. I'll just add all the splice cables together. Alright. Need to figure out this end what it is anyway. I'm gonna pause for a little bit. We'll jump back into this and edit because my hands are getting tired. <laughs> 